technology, innovation, world building, franchise management. These are all buzzwords. Tonight we are talking about Skybound, the entertainment company that is capable of and has created the greatest entertainment of our time. But enough about me. Let's watch a sizzle reel that shows us all the cool stuff Skybound has been working on and will be working on in the coming years. The decision was made a long time ago. Sacrifice for each other. To love. To live. To fight for each other. It's gonna be several months until we get any resolution, so let's make a drink. <laughs> AJ Reporting it says Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg to adapt Robert Kirkman comic Invincible for Universal. My dad says it's like your puppet. The black things pulling your strings. Hey, Mom, can I have a drink? None of these guys realized that what they were doing selfishly was going to change the industry forever. <laughs> Got Michael Traynor here with us. Austin Nichols, Chris Black, Mr. DWJ himself, Gillian McLaren Jacobs. I call her Stinkerton. Camo, comic book artist. Sam, we have Sam. I'm sitting down with Brandon Thomas and Juan Gideon. Ross Mark Juan, <laughs> Rowan Blanchard, Kyla Kennedy, Steve Zarago. Hey! Got Michael Cudlitz and Robert Kirkman. I own your plastic face. Charming, also shits out of his mouth. <laughs> Who I would be actually scared to meet in a dark alley, and so I'm gonna have to go with the Kardashians. Uh. Here at Skybound, we like putting blood on things. Oh, oh, oh. What did I just see? That was fucking awesome. So much to take in there. All right, give it up for Skybound and give it up for our panelists Robert Kirkman, David Alpert, Catherine Winder, Sean First, and TQ Jefferson. Robert, your hair looked really good in that promo. Yeah, I hadn't got a haircut. So did I, was. I. Did you guys notice that I was wearing this shirt in that? Uh, Were you wearing that in shirt? one of those clips? I only have like four shirts. <laughs> You're not and, worried. Uh, and so we we're doing a panel tomorrow uh, promoting Secret History of Comics, and I re remember that I did wear this shirt when we did my interviews, um, and so I didn't wear it for tomorrow. I wore it for today, <laughs> but then I still got busted. So I'm, I don't know why I'm talking about this. I shouldn't have said that. Someone's updating the Wikipedia right now. With your Robert shirt. Kirkman does not have very many shirts. <laughs> he's got the blue, uh, there's a red, <laughs> and then he's got two collar shirts. That's yeah. wonderful. Yep. Yeah. Each yeah. I mean, I, no, I'm not kidding. You guys could go through my uh, appearances and photos and be like, "There's that shirt. There's that shirt. Oh, he's wearing that one again. Oh, Target. Again. All Target yeah. shirts. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Most of them are from Target. <laughs> if there's uh, anyone out there from Target, well, we could do something sponsorship-wise, because I'm already wearing the shirts. Uh, be nice to get those for free, because $7 for a T-shirt is sometimes a bit much. <laughs> Just saying. 
Uh, just go to skybound.com slash Marona, and you can get your uh, discount <laughs> on your Target <laughs> shirts. <laughs> Hold on. Is it really a Marona shirt? It's Massimo. It's uh, Massimo. Ah, uh, 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 it's the other one. It's the other one. Also from Target. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... So Target really has... <laughs> a, a, just... The clothing section is really just second to none. Uh, sure, the quality is amazing. Better than Walmart. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's not saying much. What was that? Like, we got Walmart grow. fans in the audience? They're Where's our Walmart fans? Responsible no. for all the evils in the world. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, I'm kidding. I love Walmart. If anyone out there is from Walmart, I could do a sponsorship <laughs> thing with you guys, too. I would just still wear Target shirts and not tell anybody. <laughs> You're like the Charles Barkley of endorsement deals. <laughs> Sorry. Will The Walking can Dead... Can we do this all day, Steve? Do you, we we can talk do this about all Sky day, Man? yeah. I just want to know if they'll ever, if in The Walking Dead, they'll ever hide out in a Walmart. If we got the right sponsorship deal. <laughs> I'm just saying that is, uh, that is a possibility. <laughs> can right. we move on to pants? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you guys just announced that you're going to start doing some uh, animated stuff in your pipeline, in your future. And Catherine over here is kind of the head of that. Um, Catherine, you've worked on stuff like the Clone Wars animated series, the Spawn animated series on HBO, and the Angry Birds movie. And now you're kind of in charge of animation over at Skybound. Can you talk a little bit about what's going on over there? Well, I can talk about a little bit of it. There's a lot that we can't quite share at this point, but we've just recently uh, optioned or partnered on uh, an animated show, or actually game, called My Singing Monsters. It's got 50 million active users, so we're starting to open up our genre into doing some family fare, but we're also gonna do some adult fare and animation, and we might also be working on something of Robert's. It's entirely possible that that Possibly. is uh, something we cannot talk about. Thank you, Catherine, but yes, that is, <laughs> we are doing that. Very excited about the thing we can't talk about. So excited. Mm -hmm. You guys yeah. have no idea. Yeah, it's really exciting. But actually, there's, there's so much great content at, at uh, Skybound that we're tapping into that lends itself beautifully to animation in all forms. And over the coming months, years, there'll be a lot that we'll talk about. Next year's panel is going to be so good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we'll have Not a trailer kidding. for next year's panel, too. That yes, we're, we're very we have excited a trailer about. for next year's panel later. <laughs> we'll show you. So is this kind of the first time you guys are delving into more family-friendly fare, would you say? Uh, in, in, in this space, yeah. I mean, we've done some family-friendly uh, comics here and there. Sure. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's important to us that we're, you know, not just a horror company, definitely not just a zombie company. I mean, it's, you know, the entertainment spectrum is far and wide, and we want to be doing all kinds of stuff. I mean, plus I have kids. Like, it'd be nice if they knew what I did. <laughs> it, it is strange, though, how many families actually tell us that they watch Walking Dead as sort of a family communal viewing. Um, as, a, as a parent myself, I do not condone that, but uh, I, I love it as a producer. Um, but we do actually get a lot of people who say they use it as, for teachable moments. So I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and say The Walking Dead is family entertainment. I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Kids love it. Yeah, it's yeah. great. We're doing a deal with Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are also very focused on telling compelling stories across the board in games and in TV and in film. Why is it important to tell a good, compelling story? I mean, I think that's what the people want. I yeah. think uh, uh, entertainment just for an entertainment's sake is not uh, uh, you know, something that uh, people uh, are attracted to. I think if you give someone a meaningful story, no matter what the medium is, I think uh, you know, we pride ourselves, you know, even on our mobile games, you know, there is a story element to that that you can't get from most mobile games. And I think that sets us apart. It's kind of our Skybound brand to a certain extent. Right, and you guys focus on the creator most of the, for most of your properties. Like for you, it's kind of the focus on what you want to do. Yeah, I can take it from there, Steve. So the thing <laughs> is, uh, well, I mean, one of the things I think is that if you actually look at, you know, people talk about the differences between film and TV, and we actually had a meeting with a couple of different uh, studio and network heads, and the idea of trying to define what a film or television show is, 
is really difficult when you think about it, because when, when you try to actually describe what a movie is, it usually involves a theater, but you're like, okay, well, Netflix is spending over $100 million on something that's gonna be released on your, uh, on your stream. So that's, is that a movie, or is that a show, or, like, or what is that? And then people are like, oh, well, if it's a two-hour contained event that's meant to be seen um, at, in a single story, then you're like, okay, but what about things like the Harry Potter movies, or Fast and Furious, where there's multiple movies being made at the same time, that becomes more serialized, right? So when you actually start thinking about, we have these arbitrary boundaries sort of based off of historical means of distribution, but creators don't necessarily think that way. Creators are like, I have this story, I wanna get it out to the biggest possible audience, what's the best way to do it? And a lot of people are historically set up to say, we're gonna make it a movie, we'll make it a show, we'll make it a game, and we're sort of like, no, no, tell the story you want and we'll figure out the way to get it to the audience. And you got, you're kind of like transitioning that storytelling element and kind of the focus on the creator with the video game stuff as well, right? Like, and kind of like figuring out if these stories translate well to video games and to potential virtual reality games and things like that as well, right? I think uh, in bringing a story to the video game, what we're trying to do is find the part of the creator's world that works best for a game and works best for that format. So, um, like DA was saying, like, there's a story that the creator wants to tell, but usually uh, what we're doing at Skybound is we're building worlds, and not just worlds with lots of stories in them. And there are lots of different expressions for that, that world. The game is one, the comic is another, a movie could be another, a TV show. And I think one of the things that we, we focus on and do well is try to see it from all those different angles. Which, which, right we, which we humbly call our Wheel of Awesome, yes. right? Yeah, talk about the Wheel of Awesome, because I've been working with you guys for a while, and I love all the stuff you guys do, but this is the first time I was in a meeting with you guys, and someone mentioned the Wheel of Awesome, and this sounded like super secret, like stone cutters, like kind of Illuminati type Mostly stuff. Mostly for internal use, but I love it being brought up at a panel. <laughs> Well, I want, to, I want you guys to share the idea of what the Wheel of Awesome is because I think it's a really cool idea. Well, the thing is, when I, I'm the newest to Skybound on this panel, and when I started, they sat me down in a room, there was an instructional video, the Wheel of Awesome and you, and it was about two, three hours long. It was epic. I cried, um, you know, <laughs> because it's, it's round, because it's a wheel, um, so it goes around and around, and just... Fascinating stuff. You know what I mean? It's and, and we put you me. in the it center. We put you exactly. right in the center of it. Yeah, I, I, I felt like I was at the center of that. It was week. one of those I'm, clockwork I'm gonna, orange moments where we put was. Two, uh, I'm, two picks I'm, I'm in your eyelids. Back. I, I joke, stop. I, stop the jokes. Stop the jokes. <laughs> uh, in reality, it's become the thing that we talk about because, you know, in a historical way, right, people will put uh, a business unit right at the center of something, whether it's a theme park or a video game division, and they sort of say, oh, we have this much amount of output that we can sort of, that we need to sort of fill with product. And um, there's nothing wrong with that way of thinking, but we think it's a little creatively deadening, right? So we say, okay, we're gonna take a creator and sort of allow them to access all the different divisions of Skybound, whether it's film, television, comics, novels, uh, video games, live events, VR, AR, licensing, merchandising. I mean, we have, a, we have a cruise business, I mean, based off of The Walking Dead. So anywhere that somebody wants to be, Right? We can sort of help them get there. So if we have a creator with a strong voice and a strong vision, you know, we started, we, we would make this pitch to creators to say why they should work with us. And the, you know, we, they, the joke would always be that they'd be like, that's awesome. We're like, yeah, it's, it's, that's the wheel of awesome. So it, it became this joke as to sort of how we were positioning it. But, and we've just started referring to it as the wheel of awesome. But I guess now it's a thing. It's a thing. Is there also a wheel of not awesome that you guys kind of keep next to the wheel What's of awesome? That's at the other companies. <laughs> That's what they have. That's very good. There's okay. also a lot of great internal collaboration in the company because of the wheel of awesome. So, you know, we have all of these different departments that are building their own businesses. Uh, but when we all get together, we share amongst each other those ideas. And through that collaboration, we find new opportunities for our creators to take their IP and to move it into other areas and other, create other businesses with it. And I think that's something that's really unique that this company does. That's yeah, awesome. I mean, a good example of that is like, uh, if you go to the booth today, you can pick up the uh, uh, Walking Dead Shiva Force box set, which is really cool. And maybe if, maybe if you ask a question, you might get one as a gift. Oh, there's one right here. <laughs> it's this big thing. 
Uh, and so our marketing department, or mar merchandising department does this, but uh, because of Skybound and because everything's connected and everything, you actually have, uh, uh, is it Ezekiel? That's in the uh, Road to Survival Scopely video game. So That's right. it's all connected. So do you guys want to talk a little bit about the, the video game stuff as well? Like you guys have, I think you guys have some, uh, some stuff to show there as well. But before you do that, do you want to talk a little bit about what video game stuff you guys are currently working on? Uh, sure, sure. We're, we've got uh, a number of games that are already out in the world, um, both uh, on all different platforms. Uh, Robert just mentioned Scopely's Road to Survival. That's a, a mobile tactical RPG, technically. Um, and that's been out for just over a year now, and they're rolling out the big Shiva Force promotion where you get all the, the Shiva Force characters in the, uh, the game. And then there's our, our longstanding uh, uh, partner, Telltale, who uh, just finished up uh, season three, A New Frontier, and they just announced uh, Telltale season four. Can't really talk to Telltale fans. Uh, can't really say too much ab about uh, what, this, what the season's about, although it is, the focus is really gonna be on Clem and giving Clem that proper closure to her story. So <clears throat> Clem's obviously a fan favorite, so we're really looking forward to getting into that. Uh, we've got s some great VR titles. We just launched Giant Cop with our partner, uh, Other Ocean. The interesting thing about that game is you're, well, you're a giant cop. <laughs> <laughs> and hilarity ensues. Um, so we, we have all these, these tiles, Oxen Free, um, which is sort of a, 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 a conversation simulator, you could say. Um, incredible storytelling, beautiful art. That's on pretty much every platform uh, that's out there. Uh, except for Switch, strangely enough. Hmm. Anyway, Why is that? Something to think. Something to think about. You know, so I'll, I'll put it on my my to do list. Um, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, the new games that we're bringing. We're bringing out like in, in near term. One is Disruptor Beans March to War, and that's a mobile strategy game. So you scout, you build, you conquer, and all of these these games have unique um, storylines. They have unique uh, art styles, uh, unique direction, different types of gameplay. So what we're trying to do is there's a lot of Walking Dead there, but we're also spreading out into other other uh, Skybound titles like Thief of Thieves. We just announced that game uh, is being built by Rival Games. It's based on the Thief of Thieves comic book. And that's just, it's a, this beautiful uh, game that you can actually check out at the, the, the PC gaming booth um, uh, run by Dell. So we're just trying to find our versions of our stories within these worlds, like I was saying before, and bring those to fans in like a, a way that we feel is you know, strong narrative, compelling gameplay, um, just beautiful to look at, and just beautiful to you know, enter the world through, through that lens. And then on the horizon, we've got uh, our Walking Dead first-person shooter by Starbreeze. Um, so that's uh, well underway. When that one comes out, it's going to be awesome. Um, so it's just a, it's an exciting time to be uh, to be one a game maker uh, to uh, to be at Skybound because there's just so much wonderful IP. We're just really scraping the surface of of what we can do. And so, did you guys want to? I know you guys brought a clip or a special exclusive trailer for Disruptor Beams: March to War. Did you want to show did. that now? No, nah, let's not. Let's wait for it. We, yeah, let's wait. show it. I'm kidding. Oh, now they're all like, oh. You all got, right, let's do show Do you guys it. want to see it? Yeah. See the trailer? The people have spoken. <laughs> I look at that and I see hours and hours and hours of my time, <laughs> like just wasting away playing that game. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need friends. Um, so, one of your guys' biggest missions at Skybound is to build franchises, and seeing games like this and, and your guys' upcoming projects, it seems like the focus on franchise is an important thing. Why is that? Why, why franchise? I don't know that I would necessarily say it's a focus on franchise. I mean, I think that's a byproduct of it, but it's really just a desire to do the coolest things and tell the coolest stories, and the coolest things tend to get bigger and bigger and tend to grow and that lends itself to franchise storytelling. Sure. So, you know, Walking Dead, like I didn't set out to 
build a Walking Dead franchise. I just wanted to do a really cool comic book about, you know, zombies and people struggling in the zombie apocalypse. But as you get deeper and deeper into that, and as its popularity grew, we had all these opportunities around it that, you know, kind of turned it into a franchise. So I think what we try to do at Skybound is, is a lot more organic and it's a lot more story-based. And I think if the story's there and the passion is there, then it just automatically grows into that. Do you see other projects falling into that kind of, you know, you building larger stories out of current stories that you guys are already telling with new, with other properties? Definitely, yeah. I mean, I think Thief of Thieves is a good example of that. I mean, we've seen, uh, and, and, and what's cool about that is Thief of Thieves is the story of Conrad Paulson, but Conrad has this really great assistant named Celia. And so you could do a Thief of Thieves video game about Conrad that tells a video game version of the same stories from the comic, but we're not doing that. We're telling Celia's side of a lot of stories and a lot of untold things that we've seen with Celia. So Celia is actually the main character of the game and Conrad is the main character of the comic. And those two coexist, but you get a different thing from both versions, which is really cool, I think. And do you find yourselves kind of sitting around with these cool stories and these cool characters and these cool ideas and saying like, well, why don't we branch out this character to do this thing? And why don't we branch out these characters to do this thing? And we can do a spin-off of this cool thing because we love these characters, we love these stories so much. Well, I, think it's, I think it's partly character-based, but I also think that it's from the world, right? I think one of the things that The Walking Dead showed was, yes, you can tell the story of Rick Grimes in the fall of Atlanta, and you can do that whole story a bunch of different ways. You can do it in the comic, you can do it in the TV show, but one of the great things that we really focused on when we did the Telltale game was really expanding that out, so it was really Clem's story, right? So you sort of really got invested and the reason that it was still Walking Dead, even though it had different characters, was there was a world, there was a rule set, there were sort of um, there was themes that weren't sort of being broken, and what, having that allowed us to sort of expand out uh, that universe. You know, one of the things that we're working on that we're trying to figure out how do you apply that to uh, is we're doing the remake of American Werewolf in London, and so uh, looking at that and trying to figure out, okay, what are the rules like underneath this all, underneath it all, like. You know, the fact that there's, you know, his friend becomes a ghost and the fact that you have these werewolves, like, how does that all tie together? What is the broader mythology? How can you actually expand that just from the London-based mythology to sort of a broader universe? But the, the, the core starts with making sure that we care about those characters, we care about the journey that they're going on, uh, and that we really like and relate to them. Do you find it difficult to decide whether something should become a, a video game or a TV show or a movie based from a comic book or even like a mobile game? Or do you find it hard internally to figure out like what's the right medium for these types of things? I don't think it's difficult at all. I mean, it's something that uh, uh, to a certain extent kind of comes naturally. And because Skybound is so creator focused, um, you know, we allow the creators always to have a voice in um, you know, what they see from their ideas. And so, you know, once you sit down and you think about like, oh, well, this has a component that makes it a really good video game, or no, 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 this kind of, you know, was meant to be a comic and lives as a comic, or no, I can see how this would work best as a TV show. It's, it's, it's really what the story dictates and, and, and what the concept uh, would thrive the most as. That's and awesome. sometimes we'll pursue more than one iteration of it at the same time, if it feels right, if it feels organic to the, to the IP. But also at the same time, we also look at uh, part of the reason why it's a wheel is that there's not necessarily a hierarchy in the wheel. So if, uh, you know, if Robert comes in with a property and is like, hey, TQ, make this into a game, and TQ's like, I don't see a game here, it's not like, go make a game. It's like, okay, well, we hope to try to find a way to convince you that that's the case. Or if you go to Sean and Brian and say, hey, we want you to turn this into a movie or TV show, and they, they don't see it, then it's like, okay, we have to find a way to convince them as opposed to say, hey, we have to output this into that, that area. Because if we did that, we would still be that traditional old school hierarchy. Wow, I love that. What a way to like, deal with your company. <laughs> it's kind of unorthodox in a way. But also, if we all of us see it, we work in parallel and collaborate as we go to develop the characters further and build out the world so it all works cohesively, which is a lot of fun as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your really cool haircut on the secret history of comics. Nor my <laughs> lack of haircut? Is yeah, that I liked it. I thought it looked good. We filmed segments in a couple of different times, and I just kept not getting a haircut. And so <laughs> right. if you notice, like, it's like minute 10, my hair is like long, and then minute 
35, it's even longer, and then it's short again later on in the episode. <laughs> I, th- I find it funny. I think it's funny, too. I'll think about it later. Um, so what exactly is this? I know you will. <laughs> what exactly is the secret history of comics? Can you... Oh, no, I mean, it's this great documentary show that we're doing for AMC. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Daniel Youngie and uh, Rory Karp uh, doing, these, uh, uh, doing these episodes. They're documentary directors. And um, it's, it's like a, we're kind of pulling back the curtain and revealing a lot of stories that, like, me and my comic book buddies, we're like, we'll talk about at conventions, and it's stories that we know, but it's stories that aren't really, like, they're not really that, uh, uh, like, the public doesn't really know that much about them, but and, and even if you do know snippets, like we're digging really deep and finding like really cool details about some of the most famous creators of comics, some of the best characters, uh, companies, like just little lo- little known stories about the history of comics. And it'll be on uh, AMC this November. This is awesome because I feel like this hasn't really been done before, and it's kind of territory that I think needs to be explored on TV specifically. Because I think comics kind of, they, they, get, they get the cold shoulder a little bit. In the well, I mean, I mean, I guess they get the cold shoulder, but they are the thing that's driving, like, all aspects of entertainment at this point. You know, like, there's so many comic book shows, there's so many comic book movies. Uh, yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, and this medium is just, there's so much creativity here and so much passion. Like, people really need to know what it is that goes into these ideas and why they are so unique and why they are so powerful and why they're translating so well into all of this stuff that, you know, the mass audience is consuming. Sure. And Catherine, you're involved in that project as well. What, what's your perspective on the, on the project so far? Oh, it's been fantastic. We're, we actually are producing it out of our studio up in uh, Vancouver, Canada. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Canada's okay. We've got an okay. amazing Canadian <laughs> team, but of course we're producing it all over the place because we're, we're going after and talking to the, the creators and, and various people for the show. We've, we've also got a lot of animation in it because it is a visual medium. Sean's also one of the producers on it. Um, actually, we all are. Yeah. Yeah. Except for, Except you, for TQ. TQ. Sorry, TQ. Except for TQ. I'm, I'm not. Sorry. Not invited. <laughs> Enjoy your video games. TQ but, doesn't like my pig rating. I also think I also think the show is really unique in that it's not just uh, standard like biography. It's like these are some really dramatic stories being told, and people's lives are changed and affected, and businesses are built and torn down and rebuilt, and you get to really see behind the curtain. Of, uh, of you know what it's taken to get some of these stories into your hands, into the books that you all love to read. And uh, I don't know, I'm nuts about it. I think, uh, I think those guys have done a terrific job with it. Yeah. Um, so I wanna jump around a whole bunch because there's too much exciting stuff to really talk about here and I don't really wanna t- keep it cohesive because I just have so much to say about everything. I hate cohesion. Yeah, forget about cohesion. That's not what we're here for. Kind of, I'd say, maybe the elephant in the room here is the announcement of the Invincible film. Are you guys excited about that? (laughs) Um, We'll be brought a trailer. (laughs) (laughs) It's just you in the bathtub, like, playing with toys. (laughs) Pew, pew. Um... (laughs) I remember freaking out for sure, and everyone kind of in the nerd sphere, we all felt each other's cries of happiness at once. Um, Me too. <laughs> what, uh, what was the, the, what's the story behind turning Invincible into a film, uh, potential film series, rather than say like a TV series, uh, maybe like a cable HBO type series? Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, um you know, it could definitely work as a television series, and I think that could be really cool, but I think that uh, it just felt more like a, a film to me. I think that there is an epic scale that is a little bit harder, but still possible, but harder to achieve in television, and, uh, you know, being able to partner with Universal on it, I think, was a big deal, because we know that, uh, uh, you know, it's got a good home there, and there's not a lot of superheroes uh, at Universal, and so... Um, you know, they're going to do it right. And then uh, being able to work with Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg and, and being able to talk to them about, you know, what they saw in Invincible and what they wanted to do with it uh, and, and really their take on it because, you know, these guys are uniquely aware of how crowded the superhero space is in film and uh, they know the kind of things that you're going to have to do to stand out and just how unique Invincible will have to be to kind of pay tribute to what it is that the comic is and also stand out as a movie. And uh, they're just so on top of it. And I think that because there's so many Marvel movies and so many DC movies, 
it's just the perfect time for an Invincible movie just because Invincible as a comic book has always subverted everything that you know of superhero comics, all of the tricks and tools that have been used over 60 years of you know, superhero storytelling, and now that that's been translated into film, Invincible gets to come in as a movie and poke fun at all the ridiculous stuff that they do. So it'll be, it'll be great. And how involved are you guys? Because I know you're an executive producer yep. as well as DA and Sean. Um, how are you guys involved in the process of, I mean, I know there's probably not much you can talk about, but, you know, it seems like you guys have basically... I was ended- just approving costume designs yesterday. Were you really? No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, but but mean, no, I mean, uh, Seth and Evan are working on the story right now, and I've been on the phone with Evan and Seth multiple times in the last couple weeks, and uh, just had lunch with Evan on Monday, and uh, we're very knee-deep in it, and, uh, you know, he's shooting me emails, and we're going back and forth, and, and really kind of, you know, doing a lot of work, so it's great. I mean, they're, they're really, like, focusing on it right now. And Sean, you're feeling real good about this one? I'm sure you're, you're wearing the Invincible shirt there. I mean, these are the guys we make who him did Sausage Party and Ebers, <laughs> and this is the end. Pineapple and Express. Feature and pi- I mean, they're dope. Yeah. Like, we're so excited about them. They came in with uh, incredible enthusiasm, as Robert said. So, I don't know. Hold on to your hats. Go find a hat if you don't have one, and yeah. then hold on to it. <laughs> uh. Who has any hats in the audience? Um, yeah, we also thought that the, uh, the time was right, really, because between, let's say, Deadpool really show that you can do something a little bit different, that you didn't have to follow sort of the more standard uh, PG or PG-13 sort of tropes, that you can actually, you can get to some serious topics, you can get to some sort of violent topics, like you can actually really press the boundaries. And I think what we're trying to do with Invincible is really take, you know, as Robert was saying, really sort of subvert a lot of the genre and take it to the next level. I'm very excited about it. Um, do you? I mean, I don't. I, w- I don't want to keep poking at it because I know there's not much you know. Please don't. Because <laughs> I'm going to get myself in trouble. Um, I want to feel like maybe big stuff for next Comic Con. I think Ed O'Neill is going to play Omni Man. <laughs> Did you have any like dream casting that? You... Other than Ed O'Neill, not really. Did you really want Ed O'Neill? Always. I mean, who doesn't want Ed O'Neill? I mean, doesn't everyone want Ed O'Neill? Give you a round of applause for Ed O'Neill. <laughs> All right. He's actually here. Let's bring him up. Is he really? Yeah, come on in. <laughs> I would lose my mind. Um, so would I, actually. Uh, so, okay. Isn't he the greatest? Oh, I love him. He was <laughs> great in Wayne's Dutch? World. Remember in Wayne's World when he was, the, he was in oh, Wayne's World? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, he was so the good. diner guy. Yeah, with, and he was crazy. Stories, and the camera followed him, and he was like talking about killing people and stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, it was great. It was great. <laughs> DA, you like Ed O'Neill. You ever see Spartan? I didn't see Spartan. Oh, he is so good in Spartan. I didn't see that. Mm. John from Cincinnati? Whoo. Any Spartan fans in the audience? Spartan? It's great. <laughs> you and me, baby. Val Kilmer, Spartan. Any chances it's of... All, it's, a, it's like a legitimately awesome movie. You guys should watch it. Any chance of Skybound taking over the Spartan franchise? I think we're working on that. <laughs> Doing right. a Spartan remake with Ed O'Neill's son. So, um... It's real, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm a big VR boy. I'm a big nerd. Spartan VR. L- Spartan VR. Is it in the pipeline? Let's Coming start. to a Target near you. <laughs> Not at Walmart. Um, I, uh, I enjoy jacking in, which is the term that we VR people use. I have heard that term many times. It's, listen, it's from the movie Lawnmower Man. They okay. called it jacking in when they went into the virtual space. So we've embarrassingly adopted that as the way of uh, going into the don't, VR don't, world. Don't bring us into that. Well, you can't yeah, your not, own not us. Not Sounds us. like jacking in's not taking with Skybound. No, no, okay. no. Right. We're jacking off jacking in right now. That is not. We Let not, me begin. Do not want to be in there. Um. But I love VR. I'm very, I'm very much uh, in tune with the VR world. I nerd out a lot about it. You guys are doing a lot of really cool VR stuff, um, especially with Delusion, which I got to visit the set of, and it's incredibly terrifying. I watched a little bit of footage, and I can't talk about it, but it's amazing. It's very cool. Very scary stuff. And also with Giant Cop, you guys are doing uh, more VR stuff. Why do you think VR is an important storytelling format? You want to take it, Mr. Q? Uh, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, I think that, uh, especially in terms of a video game or video game experience, uh, VR uh, 
creates a level of immersion that is unparalleled. Uh, in, in an ideal format, it, it's, it's unparalleled. Um, we, we always strive for immersion and strive for making you feel like you, you're, you're part of the game, be this character, feel what it's like to be like that character, but with VR, you're put in the scenario, you're in that world, and you're reacting as, as the character. You become the character. So, um, you know, for, for Giant Cop, it, that's a, a more of a comedic take on it, but we're also doing uh, Walking Dead VR with Skydance uh, Interactive. So, so I think the, the cool thing there is that um, you know, we're going to bring a, a, a new level of storytelling to to the VR space, um, and I think that's that's the key word for for that game: new, new characters, new locations, new story, new, new, new. So it's just a really exciting time and just a really exciting format to play in. And I feel really good about VR from like a consumer's perspective because I I love I love VR. I feel like some of it's, you know, a little high end, expensive. You need a VR room to do it, but PSVR has one of those things where literally your TV is a is a virtual reality unit and um, you know, with the headset and it's very affordable. Do you guys see VR as kind of like a future, like the future of potential gaming, storytelling, potentially movies? You know, where do you see VR well, going in the future? Well, I think one of the interesting things that, that people um, don't pick up on is it, with VR is that it is because graphics are, have such fidelity and, and the machines are, are so powerful that you have to use, you have to use uh, for VR is that we're in the early stages of this. We're in the infancy. These are the 2600 days of VR. So and we've been at it for about two, three years now and we've uh, managed to, to create some pretty interesting experiences. You know, imagine where we'll be in 10 you know, 15. So uh, if I had my druthers, you know, I'd want, I want my holodeck. I want, I want Ready Player One. I want, you know, that, I want that sort of experience. And I don't see why we can't get there at some point in time. So I think it's awesome. Wow. When we have holodecks, you will never see me at Comic-Con. <laughs> I will be solving we'll crimes with Data and Jordy LaForge. <laughs> Ooh, sign me up. <laughs> Robert, what's your take on like VR? Like, Mario, I know. What, what are your, what's your take on VR? Like, do you, you've, you've dabbled. I'm sure you've played. Yeah, yeah, all no, I stuff. think it's amazing. I think the storytelling potential is what excites me the most. I think being able to immerse somebody in the world and tell a different kind of story, do things that you can't really achieve in any other medium. I think VR uh, opens a lot of doors for that. Um, being able to, uh, you know, playing with someone's emotions, not really playing with, that's not the best way to put it, <laughs> uh, but like just really digging deep uh, is something I love to do with Walking Dead, really, you know, uh, get people invested in a story and, and uh, you know, see what happens from that. And I think you can do that at a much higher level with VR. Sure. So, so that's what really excites me. I mean, I can't wait to see the type of technology where you actually join Rick and his crew, like where you're actually part of a story in The Walking Dead where you're just, you know, it's like those old games where like they would have like video characters and they'd be like, make this choice. And then they'd all pause and then you'd hit the space bar to make the choice or whatever. But I see a technologically advanced version of that where you actually are in the universe of The Walking Dead. Like how far away do you think we are we, that we are from that? I don't know, like a month. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know, a month. <laughs> <laughs> TQ, month, two months? What do you think? Month and a half, 90 days. Time. Wow, right. really? Yeah. Okay, sign me up. Oh, wait, what do you think? Ten, <laughs> ten years? Six years? <laughs> Uh, I think it's much. I, mean, I think it's much closer than that. Um, you know, part of what we're looking at. I can't give a whole lot of details about Walking Dead VR, but you know, one of the the questions we're asking ourselves is, you know, what what how does choice appear? How is choice executed in, in a world that you're fully immersed in? So, um, you know, instead of having you know, uh, uh, text on screen, can we do that physically? Like, what, what's, the, what's the, the game tracking? What is the game uh, paying attention to? What is it that you're doing that's affecting the game? So uh, all of a sudden, so many other things matter. And uh, I think that's an, ex uh, an, an exciting place to, to play in. Well, in, in, in partnership with, uh, with a company called Night School, we released a game called Oxenfree. And Oxenfree was sort of more a you know, narrative adventure game. But one of the great things about this interactive narrative was that it was dialogue driven as opposed to choice driven. So you were, uh, you were given the opportunity, someone would say something to you and you were given sort of word balloons to choose what you would say back. And 
it felt much more of a natural type of progression as opposed to being like A, go left, or B, go right. Because sometimes you didn't know where the conversation was going to take you. And so trying to think of like mechanics like that so that you're, you're feeling immersed and natural in your environment. You might be having a conversation at a party and you don't know if you're just wasting time or this is actually going to lead to you guys you know, going to do something. You don't, you don't know which way it's going to go. And I think replicating that uh, with purpose inside of a any sort of narrative is is incredibly both difficult and but also exciting. Um, I'm I mean it's really kind of it's almost scary too because the VR stuff could be like Robert was saying like why even bother leaving the house at some point when the VR gets really cool and immersive and real you know is that what what do we what do we do when it gets to that point you know like kids I mean, will probably be adults by then. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Just a real dark answer, though. The whole room was like, <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, God. Ooh. I don't know. Uh, have you guys talked at all about delusion much? Other than, I mean, have you even, have you, you guys have announced it, but have you guys talked about exactly what delusion is? Well, yeah, so delusion was this amazing sort of uh, interactive narrative that would go on, uh, interactive theatrical that would go on in L.A. They basically would, for the last, I don't know, five or six years, they would take over a house in downtown Los Angeles and basically turn it into this this theater event, right? So you'd go into, you would tour it in a house with like 10 people and the actors would be playing around you and playing off you. And you know, the first time I went in, I went with my wife and uh, I get taken to a room by a vampire. She gets sort of like uh, kidnapped and put in a coffin and like, you know, I have to go find her and sort of free her from these guys. And it was this crazy experience, whereas my experience was entirely unique. Like, you know, she was having her experience being literally put in a coffin and buried and I'm sort of being pulled off over Sounds here. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. I did it too. It was crazy. You guys have done the delusion experience before? Okay, so it really is. You're like a part of a theater experience. You're like you're like a cast member almost of this, you know, and of this terrifying experience. And it really was amazing. And then when you guys announced that you were going to partner with them to make a VR experience, I was like, "Oh man." Well, because it's is, it's yeah. it's that type of thing. So one, if you think about the storytelling, it's already being told in 360, right? When you, when you do a traditional movie or, or, or go to the theater right, or watch a play, right? It's like you watching something over here. But this thing, like, it's going on all around you and there's multiple narratives that are being told simultaneously. So the narrative that I had was entirely different than my wife's, but we were all in the same place at the same time. So I thought that was, we, we looked at that and um, uh, one, one, of, uh, one of our executives, Rachel Skidmore, was like, this is a really great opportunity to turn this into VR because they're thinking about narrative in that same way. It's not 100% linear, right? It's somewhere between a traditional play and a video game. There's a beginning, middle, and end, right? You walk through the house and eventually, you, eventually they let you go um, after terrifying you, but the, the experience that you have is unique. So a lot of people go back, not just each year for the new play, but like we went through it, I don't know, we must have gone through it like a dozen times because each time you go through it, it's entirely different. So um, we're like if we can replicate that sensation in VR, that was why it was so exciting to work with those guys. That's awesome. I'm very excited for that. Have you guys announced a release date for any of that at all? Or uh, We have not. Okay. But thank you for bringing it up. Okay, great. Uh, sorry. It's the, uh, sorry, I didn't mean let me take out this note here. And, uh, this just this make is your last panel, it. Steve. This is my last panel, and I'm just done. fired. You guys are going to kick me out of my hotel room. It's going to be great. Okay. We got him a hotel room? <laughs> no. Not worth it. <laughs> I'm sharing a room with TQ. It's really oh, okay. cool. We're like roommates. What are you, why are you, don't be embarrassed. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's open it up to questions from the audience. If you guys want to... No pushing. We'll, we'll get through. No pushing. No shoving, please. Um, and we do have some cool stuff up here. Uh, there's not much, but uh, I guess, you know, I'll decide who is worthy of receiving a cool <laughs> free gift. So Not you. Yeah. <laughs> you seemed really into it, so not you. Um... <laughs> Okay, what's your name, sir? So, hi, my name is Nomad. And I want to ask you guys, what was the coolest or weirdest thing you bought when you became super rich? <laughs> I mean, that's a great question. Can we get some clap? A gray colored shirt? I don't know that I would, I, I, I don't know that I'd say super rich, but like, you know, like reasonably rich. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, I don't know, I bought, uh, I bought uh, the, the, the all, like a full set of uh, like garbage pail kids. 
No. Like, well, like all, yeah, there was like a guy on eBay that was selling a binder for like, I don't know, it was like two grand or something. Oh. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, I can, I can get that. That's uh, awesome. So, <laughs> so there's that. All right, was that? A lot, a lot of Garbage Pail Kids, I do that. Oh, I love Garbage Pail Kids. Oh, yeah. So cool. What about They're the so cool. Yeah, what, 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 do you, what are you? I'm still you, working uh, on it. I'm not, not quite there yet. <laughs> <laughs> you want a loan? No. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I could sell some Garbage Pail right, Kids and give you the money. All right, come on over here. I'll give you something. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. No. <laughs> Hi, Robert. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I have like so many. Don't be nervous. <laughs> We're all friends here. <laughs> I know. I have so many questions. So, but I wanted to say, first of all, because I don't get that many opportunities to talk to you anymore now that you are rich and famous, apparently. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to say. I also bought distance. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. Now, now we need wristbands to get our Oh, I, I do apologize for that. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, I'm a big comic book nerd, and, um, you know, I'm that friend that everybody hates that when they're watching The Walking Dead or something that says, uh, oh, yeah, well, if you think this is good, you should be reading the comic. I love those people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've been reading The Walking Dead and Invincible for years, and I'm so excited about the Invincible news. I love Ryan Otley's artwork. I love your story. And, um, you know, and I really appreciate how you're still so accessible to the fans. But one of the questions in my head, and I keep losing my train of thought because I'm oh, so no. excited to talk to you. <laughs> We're here for you. <laughs> Is that, um, you know, I, as a comic book fan, I was really nervous when they adapted The Walking Dead into mm -hmm. a TV series because like most Walking Dead fans, we were afraid it wouldn't be as good or as true to the comic. And you, you guys did an, a remarkable job. So how involved are you going to be with Invincible and, um, you know, how... How true to the comic do you think it's going to stay? I mean, exactly how true to the comic it stays uh, is something we're figuring out right now, but I will be as involved in Invincible as I am involved in Walking Dead. So uh, I can, you know, pretty much guarantee that I will be really into what we uh, put out. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, it'll be up to you guys, but I, I'm really excited about what we're doing, and I think you guys are going to be very happy. Awesome. I mean, right, it's important on. to me that, you know, the fans that have been with something for the many, many years, uh, you know, feel like we're, you know, paying respect to what it is that we're adapting. So, so yeah, it's, it's very important. Cool. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. All right, Negan shirt, go. <laughs> All right, good evening. Um, my name is Alan, and I... I'm going to make this short and sweet, but will Clementine and or the Garcias meet Negan and the Saviors? I now, that is an interesting idea. Um, well, the only thing I can tell you about the story at this point is that the, the focus is strongly on Clem. Um, you know, as we uh, develop the story alongside Telltale, uh, all sorts of ideas are going to get thrown up, get thrown onto the wall, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out what the, the best Clem's story we can make it will be. Awesome. Thank you. Hopefully it has Negan in it. Go ahead. You want your, you're not going to take your gift? That's yeah, fine. Come over here and get a gift. All right. Go ahead. Okay, so not Walking, Day, Walking Dead related, but I saw you guys do Super Fight, and I didn't know that was you, and it's my favorite game of all time. Yeah. Um, so I once had to argue that for Barney, a, le a limbless Barney with, who spat acid versus 500 elderly people with jetpacks. I want to know what your favorite battle is that you guys have done in Super Fight. Ooh. Oh my. Uh, I, I once argued that uh, Bill Clinton made out of peanut butter could oh, beat... Uh, gosh, I can't remember now. It was like Bruce Lee... Uh, like a... I don't know. I'm just going to make it up. Laser eyes. I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and my argument was that, uh, you know, Bill Clinton is not in any way... Uh, you know, hurt by being made out of peanut butter. He's still a great orator and could talk anyone out of a fight. I think I was on that fight with you. I think you might have been, yeah. You were, like, so adamant that Bill Clinton made out of peanut butter would win everything. Like, you were, you were like, you, you would not take no for an answer with that. No, I was very upset that I did not win the vote. <laughs> I, I still feel like the decision was incorrect. Which is, what's his special power as a peanut butter president? The peanut butter is unimportant. What is important is the fact that he is Bill Clinton. <laughs> All right. All right. 
Thank you. Come on over here for this. And also try out red flags. Pretty awesome. Red flags. Hi. What's up, Marco? Uh, hello. Uh, Great like, Saga cosplay, everyone. Like a lot of us. Saga merchandise available at the Skybound booth. I grew Thanks up for coming the, out, dude. <laughs> you got me there. Yep. Like a lot of us, I grew up in the 80s, and as a result, I am an action figure and comic book addict. And I'm, I've come to the conclusion that I think 3.75 inch is the best size for an action figure due to G.I. Joe and Star Wars, really loving those. And I really have to say I'm really happy about what I see you guys starting to offer both in The Walking Dead and the Saga stuff. Is there a plan to kind of keep that going and bring more of them out? Maybe, yeah. Maybe a little faster than they would come in? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know that we have, uh, it takes uh, like, a, like nine months to a year to actually produce an action figure. Uh, so there's like a long, you know, it's a fairly long lead time. Yeah. Uh, so there's, I think we have like, 10 action figures in the works right now. All right. So, uh, so we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep launching them every quarter in various promotions like the Mega Box or New York Comic Con or San Diego or Black Friday. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, our, our action figure program is really ramping up. Uh, awesome. Our, you know, partnership with McFarlane Toys and we're doing a lot of stuff. So, so yeah, there's, there's, I already know what the next Saga figure is. So, would, and it's, would, it's, would you care to tell us? Nope, can't do it. Will you tell me? Robert, will you tell me? Yeah, I'll tell you after the panel. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, I'll show you a picture. Oh, cool. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, you're not uh, Steve Zaragoza. Come get your Shiva Force patch, sir. You don't boo me. <laughs> you boo me. What are you, are you Picard, Riker? Um, what are we doing? A, a captain in Picard's yeah. era. No, nah, you need to commit. <laughs> <laughs> I like my hair, so. Okay. Um, so my qu my question is for you, Mr. Kirkman. Uh, obviously, yes, it goes without saying that you're. You're kind of a rising businessman being um, part of the... Uh, it's because of those smart investments like those Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hey, those will be worth something someday. Yep. So with all the stuff you're doing over at Skybound, you're also still writing. You're writing Walking Dead, you're writing Outcast, you at least were writing Invincible. I, I still have a little bit to go. Okay. <laughs> Last issue doesn't come out till January. Okay, um, uh, those are just the three titles I read too. How do you do it? How are you still creating, um, you're, you're still writing without losing your mind, falling behind, or just well, quality? Well, I mean, quality? me not losing my mind is up for debate. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it's what I love to do. I mean, I, I love doing all the stuff that I do at Skybound. And, you know, to be honest, uh, uh, I'll say a vast majority of the weight falls on this man's shoulders when it comes to a lot of the business stuff. Uh, so that gives me uh, the ability to write. But writing is you know, what I wake up in the morning wanting to do. And writing comics is the thing I prefer. Uh, you know, it's the medium that I like to tell stories in the most. It's the medium I'm most familiar with. It's the medium I have the most passion for. So uh, there will never be a day where I'm not writing comics. You know, I just love doing it. So, uh, you know, things like Invincible will end and, you know, I'll do something else. So, uh, so yeah, it's, 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 it'll, it'll keep going for a good long time. I'll be writing Walking Dead for another hundred years. So, you know. <laughs> DA, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with all that? It's oh, no one cares. It's fine. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> Everyone's supposed to go, aww. Oh. DA, for DA. That was what. Thank you. <laughs> all right, come get your cool swag, sir. How do you deal with it? So, Walking Dead Compendium <laughs> 1 for you. There you are, sir. You're too young to ask a question. Sit down. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding you. I'm just kidding. My Adorable. question is for you. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> nice Let's do you. it, man. I like that hat. Thanks. When's Beta coming back? Uh, soon? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe sooner than you think? I can't say exactly, <laughs> I can't say exactly when, but beta, beta is still out there, one of the remaining whispers that didn't die in the Whisperer War, and we haven't seen him for a few issues, but... Uh, we will see him soon, and it will be surprising because I'm not going to tell you exactly when, but uh, uh, next 10 issues or less. Thanks. I narrowed it down a little bit. Come on over here. Thank You're... you for asking a question. Give him something good. Here's a Lu Lucille bat for you. And that's for 15 and older, that bat. <laughs> yeah. Someone take that bat from him. He's not allowed to have it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's going he's gonna to hit me. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Jamie. Um, my question is for, I guess, for the panel. 
when you guys decide to have a character that is going to be part of, you know, the, let's say, um, Walking Dead or Outcast, um, is there a, a, a time where you guys are fighting for, no, this character should make it or should not make it, eventually makes it? Like, is there like a democratic way of saying, yes, this character is going to make it because of, and then you get a surprise, oh, wow, we didn't think that this character was really going to be uh, accepted or be popular uh, w with a fan? Uh, we have a, we are not a democracy at all. Uh, we are, we are a tyranny of creator, right? So the creators tell us when the characters should come, when the characters should go. We, we'll, we'll make an impassioned argument, um, and Robert usually will ignore that argument. Um, some other creators will listen, and, you know, much to their benefit, but, you know. Wimps. <laughs> but ultimately for us, you know, the thing for us is we, we, we'll give the best advice and guidance that we can, but ultimately we believe in our creators and even if we disagree with their decision, and by the way, we often disagree with their decision, but that sort of creative tension, we ultimately always will back the creator. All right. Thank you. That's awesome. All right, come over here. I'm running out of stuff, but there's a beautiful um, Lucille necklace for you, sir. <laughs> His daughter will love it, it's, he said. 15 plus on that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so my name's Alan. My question's for the panel. Um, so I just started working, and uh, one of the things I noticed when uh, you, know, you go to work is that uh, you definitely need something to bring you back every day, other than the money, of course. So what's that for you? Why do you come back to work every day, you know, put out the stuff that you do and, uh, you know, make our lives with uh, either comics or things that you guys uh, create? For me, it's the people and the creators uh, that have such a passion and, and the collaboration. We have a great time and we all love working together. And if we spend this much time together, it's got to be fun. And Skybound is a really fantastic place to work. I think I, I think I fell in love with storytelling when I was a young kid because I, you know, I, I got to sort of live vicariously through other characters and there was a catharsis about that for me. And, uh, and you know, we work with so many incredibly uh, talented storytellers and, and every time we sit down with one of them, there's a different, there's like different therapy going on. You know, there's a different story being told. There's a different journey for each character. And, uh, and that's really like at the heart of what we do as storytellers is to kind of tell stories that we can all kind of walk away being better people, I think, or at least for me, uh, for having uh, been involved in it or having watched it. So that to me is the most exciting part of this job. Um, uh, in a, over the course of my career, I've had the opportunity to create or help create a great many things, you know. I've, I've put people on Mars. I've destroyed whole worlds, you know. Um, I, I've, I've fought plagues and so forth. And that's just, um, there are very few jobs where you could go to and get to do that. And uh, one of the things that's um, great about Skybound and the, uh, the IP there and the craters there and the people there is that we encourage um, our partners to expand those universes rather than Here's your set of characters. Yeah, write a story that's different than this guy that's also writing stories with those characters. But rather, create new, create new characters, create new spaces, create new, new, new problems, um, and breathe life into them, and, and make them a, an extension of the world that, that's already there. And that freedom is rare um, at, at any company. So most places are, here's your style guide, that's it. And Skybound is exactly the opposite, and that is, that's refreshing and, and, and welcome. A uh, hard day of work for me uh, includes uh, watching television, uh, reading comic books, and playing video games. And if it's a really long day, I might play with some action figures. So <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a 12 year old boy in a slightly older man's body, and uh, I'm just happy to go to work because I get to play all day. Awesome. Well, the All thing right. that keeps me going is a uh, borderline psychotic desire to crush my enemies under the weight of my success. <laughs> Thank you, guys. They think you're joking. All right, sir, come get your exclusive bag. You can only get it at the Skybound booth. <laughs> the next really one gets the water bottle? All right, we have time for one more question. Just one All more, right, unfortunately. Uh, hi, my name is Denise. Uh, first, I gotta say, The Walking Dead kids 
ass. It's the best show out there. I love it. Uh, you were talking about virtual reality. Uh, I actually have a virtual reality headset and everything. I just got a couple of months ago. I love it. Can't put it down. Uh, the thing is, I, there was a zombie one out there, and I can't think of the name of it, to where you kind of outlived the last few minutes of a sane, normal person before it changes. Uh, Arizona Sunshine. That might be it. I'm not sure. Um, no, what? TQ is sure. <laughs> <laughs> I am sure it is Arizona Sunshine. Uh, the one thing I noticed is that you don't really have a very good experience because with games, I think you are right about what we're going to see in the future for games where it's really going to be more immersed in it, uh, which I love. Is there any way that we're going to be maybe, how can I put this? Um, Better than that game? <laughs> We're trying. Uh, more immersed, like maybe we can kind of be like in, inside of the show ourselves, like an actual character, to where we can actually co-host, you know, and actually talk to the character itself, like you would in a TV show or anime, like I am to you right now. I'm not making sense, I know, but... <laughs> I think it makes sense. I lost, no, no, I, I lost my thoughts, so I'm kind of... No, no, no. I mean, I think that's, that's yeah. where the technology is going, right, TQ? Right. Like we were saying before, we're striving to get to a point where the immersion feels complete. Um, yeah. So not just... It's not putting text on the screen, although that, that does happen and it's fine, but it's how you're standing, what you're looking at, yeah, and, and having the characters in the, the, the game or the experience react to that, I think is is a challenge worth taking on. Um, when it happens, I can't tell you for sure, but I think that, it's, like I said, this is the infancy of this technology. So as it gets better, as we get smarter about it, we'll get closer to that moment of complete immersion. Yeah. Of course, cool. it's the next step. That, it's the next step in, in role playing, right? Definitely. We're getting kicked out. So come up here and get these action figures. This is for you. This is for you, ma'am. Thank you. Exclusive Shiva Force set you can get at the Skybound booth. There you are. <laughs> Enjoy it. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause to Robert Kirkman, David Alpert, Catherine Winder, Sean First, and TQ Jefferson. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, guys. Everybody's out. <laughs>